Hello, Wonder Hussy here, coming to you live from the nerve center of the Wonder Hussy Empire, the Wonder Hussy Cave, my office. That's right, this is where all the magic happens, where I edit all those fabulous videos for you to enjoy every Wednesday. And this week, by popular demand, inexplicable popular demand, I'm going to be talking about how I make my YouTube videos. I think they say there's two things you should never watch being made. Laws and sausage. Well, I think they need to add a third thing to that, and that's YouTube videos, because, well, the process isn't very glamorous, and sometimes it can be downright ugly. For example, giving you this sneak peek at my pathetic, cramped little office here in the casita. It's like a, I don't know, six by ten foot room. That is not only my office, but it also doubles as my closet. And right now it's doubling as my recording studio, so I've got this giant softbox light up. Anyway, for the duration of this video, I'm just going to be sitting at my desk. Don't worry about what's in the background. Okay, well, I have a feeling this is going to be a really long video because there's a lot of information to get to, so I'm just going to cut to the chase and tell you about how I started my YouTube channel, how I grew my YouTube channel, and how I maintain my YouTube channel, and that'll include information about the recording gear I use and the editing software I use. But first, let's go back in time all the way to, well, technically, I guess I started my channel in 2011. You know, back in 2011, I guess I created the channel just to throw up some goofy little clips that I was shooting at the time. I think I had a, like little videos of me riding my bike around at Burning Man. I know I went in the porta potty at Burning Man once. I didn't really get serious about having a YouTube channel until 2016, five years after I started my YouTube channel. So if you go on my channel now, it'll say that I've been YouTubing since 2011 and you go, golly, 2011, that's 12 years ago. You don't have very many subscribers to show for 12 years. Well, that's because like I said, I didn't really start YouTubing in earnest until 2016. And that happened pretty much by accident. Okay, I was driving home from Burning Man in Northern Nevada. Well, I can't see Nevada on the map, but Burning Man's way at the top of Nevada. And I lived in Vegas at the time, which is at the bottom of Nevada. So I had to drive through a whole lot of nothingness. If you've ever driven through Nevada between Reno and Vegas, you know there ain't much out there. Well, there I was driving my, uh, I had a pickup truck at the time, towing my vintage travel trailer. And I was cruising down a desolate stretch of highway in a part of the state that I hadn't driven before. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw what looked like an abandoned... Well, I wasn't sure if it was a motel or a brothel. Remember, I was in Nevada, so it could have been either. So I pulled over because I'd always been, I guess I'd always been interested in poking around abandoned places. And normally, well, I would go into an abandoned place like that and I would take still photos for my blog. That's right. I wasted many, many, many years writing a blog at wonderhussy.com and you can go check it out. It's still up there. Uh, about my modeling adventures when I was working as a nude and fetish model. I had some pretty interesting stories, but for whatever reason, I preferred to write about it instead of, gosh, it, it would have made for some very interesting video content. And yes, I wish I would have started a YouTube channel way before I did, but I didn't. I wrote this blog for many years until I realized that huh, people don't really like reading. And well, that actually happened right uh, when I was telling you, I was driving down the highway, came upon this abandoned brothel. For whatever reason that day, I decided to shoot a video instead of taking my usual stills. And so I went in with my, I think I had a GoPro at the time. So I just decided to go in with my GoPro and go, well, now what do you suppose this is? And I mean, if I go back and watch my early videos now, of course the production values are horrible. Like half the footage is blurry or out of focus. Like audio is probably terrible, but I guess what I lacked for in technique, I made up for with enthusiasm because people really enjoyed this video of me poking around this abandoned, well, I wasn't sure at first. I thought it was a motel, but as I go through the building, if you watch that video, I sort of figure out, oh, hold on a minute. There's a whole lot of bedrooms, but they don't have bathrooms. And then there's this room at the end of the hall with walled of ceiling shag carpeting and a heart shaped hole in the floor for a jacuzzi tub. Brothel! And then a little bit farther down the road, believe it or not, I got back in my truck and okay, now I got to finish driving home. Do, do, do. Not 15 minutes down the road, I came upon an entire abandoned town with an abandoned casino with old slot machines laying around. I mean, it was wild. Well, I couldn't drive past something like that, even though by now it was getting kind of late in the day and I'm trying to tow this trailer home before it gets dark. So I had to stop again. I got out with my GoPro and I went around and all the buildings and shot the whole abandoned 
I think I called it Abandoned Casino Ghost Town. I guess I edited those videos together. Uh, and I'll show you the editing software I use. It's super easy. So even if I had no experience with it, I mean, even an idiot can figure this program out. So I banged these videos together and put them up on my YouTube channel, which remember was just a few clips of me in a porta potty at Burning Man. I don't know to this day why I threw that stuff up there, but I did and I started getting emails from people and comments from people that were really into this thing called Urbex, which I had never heard of, but come to find out it stands for Urban Exploration. I guess it's a name for uh, exploring abandoned places. And that had long been my jam. So now to find out there was all these other people that were into the same thing, I thought, mm, golly, this is wild. Okay. That was September. And I don't remember what happened. I must have kept shooting stuff just for fun, but I didn't actually check uh, my AdSense account. That's the way you get paid on Google from YouTube. You have this, it's called AdSense because they pay you through the ads that they show on your YouTube videos. Well, it occurred to me, I, re I was visiting my mom for Thanksgiving. I remember I was sitting at her kitchen table and I thought, oh golly, I wonder if I've made any money off all these YouTube videos I've been throwing up. I mean, people have been emailing me, people have been watching them. Now back then it was different. This was uh, 2016. You didn't have to have any number of subscribers or any number of hours of watch time to get paid. Now it's different. I think you have to have at least 1000 subscribers and at least, I can't remember, a certain number of hours that people have watched your channel before YouTube will even put ads on your videos and let you make money. Well, back when I started, which was 2011, there were no such rules. So remember in 2016, Thanksgiving, I log into my AdSense account. This is the total accrued earnings from when I first posted something in 2011, you know, six years. Okay, I had been earning five cents a day or whatever it was. So when I logged in there, holy cow, there was $700 in my AdSense account. Now, meanwhile, remember that was six years worth of ad revenue. So it was nothing to be proud of, but at that time, you know, I was a gig worker. I was a hustler. I was always looking for the next hustle, modeling, trade shows, events. I was always looking for a new hustle. And so now I thought, oh, wait a minute. If I could make money at YouTube, maybe I should focus on that. So that's just what I did. And you know, when I decide to devote myself to something, I don't half-ass it, I give 110%. So first thing I did was log on and watch uh, some videos about how to run a successful YouTube channel. Well, one of the first takeaways that I got from these videos was it's very important to be consistent. You gotta upload videos every single day week. You know, you pick a day of the week, you know, maybe you want to upload on Mondays and Fridays, or maybe you just want to do Wednesdays, or maybe you want to try to do a video every day. And I don't know how you would ever do that, but I decided that I was going to start posting videos on Wednesday. And I don't even know why I picked Wednesday. I guess I kind of thought, oh, well, it's the middle of the week. People are probably having that midweek slump. Well, I think I started out posting two videos a week, which is what I still do to this day. And let me just say, I've never missed a single Wednesday since 2016. So, and this also brings up another point. Sometimes people ask me if I, if I use a script when I make videos and I don't usually, like if I'm out and about exploring something, I'm usually just like, Hey, huh, look at this. What do you suppose that was? You know, there's no script necessary. If I'm doing a video that's more uh, history and that requires a lot of research, sometimes I'll have a script or for like this one, I'm trying to keep myself on track and not make the video too long. So I kind of have some bullet points fleshed out of what I want to talk about. So there I am putting up videos every week. How did I get my name out there? I'm terrible with marketing and promotion. I mean, you may have noticed if you've watched my videos, I never, ever, ever say, Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. And oh, I've got a Patreon if you want to support the channel, blah, 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 blah. I don't. And that's because <laughs> Wonder Hussy is not a like button whore. Uh, one of my viewers made me this and by gum, this is my philosophy. I refuse to be one of those YouTubers that's always e-begging for money and likes and subscribes. Like, if you're watching my video and you want to subscribe to my channel, you can figure out how to do it. You don't need me yelling at you. So that being said, I guess my channel just sort of grew organically on its own. And that's another thing. I've helped a number of other YouTubers that have baby channels that are starting out. Like I like helping new YouTubers and introducing them to my audience. And then you guys, if you like them, you go subscribe to their channel. Well, I never really had anyone like that help me out. I did do an interview with Bob Wells one time for Cheap RV Living, but that wasn't until 
I think that was in 2020. So I had already been going for like three years. I had over 100,000 subscribers that I got on my own without the help of any other YouTuber. That being said, I think I'm at the point now where I do, I need a bigger channel or a channel that's at least the same size as me to collaborate with me and expose me to a new audience. So if anybody watching this has a channel with at least 150, 200,000 subscribers, holla at me. But if I'm being totally honest, there was one kind of cheesy thing I did to get views and subscribers early on in my YouTubing. And it was before I really, I wasn't serious about making a career out of it. I just thought, oh, I need to get people to watch my channel. Hmm, what could I do? Oh, well I knew, and I know this is gonna gross out a lot of people and maybe even offend some people, but I knew there's a sizable contention of people that enjoy hairy armpits on a woman. And so I made a few videos back then demonstrating me shaving my pits because I was still working as a model at that time. So I would let my pits get hairy in between photo shoots. And then when I had to do a shoot, you know, I'd, I'd make a video showing me shaving and then I'd put it up on YouTube. And you know, to this day, one of those hairy armpit videos is my number one most viewed video. That was the only thing I did to kind of cheat. And it, I don't know that it really helped me. It got some armpit people watching my channel, but then they probably just unsubscribed when they realized that Oh, all this girl's doing is going around exploring abandoned brothels. There's no hairy armpit content here. Another thing I did early on to improve my odds of success was I stopped cussing. When I started making videos, I really didn't think anybody was gonna be watching, you know? Uh, certainly not people who would be offended by cussing. You know, I'm making these urbex videos exploring an abandoned brothel. I didn't think anybody would mind if I let loose with an F-bomb here and there. But then I did a video pretty early on in my YouTube career where I went to a, a warm spring, beautiful place. And so in the video, you know, I'm looking at everything going, holy f this is f***ing beautiful, oh my God. Well, guess what? I got about 101 angry emails from people, young lady, you cuss like a sailor. I was trying to watch this video with my granddaughter and blah, blah, blah. Holy cow, people are trying to watch my videos with their grandkids? Oh, okay, how am I gonna stop cussing? Man, I was such a prolific cusser and still am in my private personal life. I love to cuss. And it was a pretty big part of my vocabulary. So now that I'm making these videos and I have to figure out a way not to cuss, well, that's why I started saying things like golly and yikers and holy cannoli. They were basically placeholders to use instead of curse words. And it worked, uh, dare I say worked too well, because now even in my personal life, I just don't cuss as much as I used to. Anyway, uh, this all went on for all of 2017. I was just plugging away through 2017, but I was still working as a model because I wasn't really making much money at YouTube. I guess I gradually probably started tapering off in 2018 because I started making more on YouTube. And so then I started modeling less. And I think I, I did my last paid nudie photo shoot in January of 2019. And I did my last trade show in January, 2019 as well. So basically since 2019, I've been 100% full-time YouTubing and I haven't looked back. But that's not to say that I had any kind of crazy like astronomical success at any one point. The weird realization, at least in my experience was, it's just been very slow, steady growth with my channel. I have about 230,000 subscribers right now. And this is January, 20. 23. I started in 2016. Well, I started late 2016. So we'll say January, 2017 to January. So what is that? Six years. And I only have 230,000 subscribers. Now you might say, oh, 230,000 subscribers is a lot of subscribers. What are you talking about, Wonder Hussy? Well, it is, and it isn't in the scheme of things. You know, there's channels that have millions of subscribers, but I don't think I'll ever get to that level. And you know, to be honest, I think a big part of it is I'm not ashamed to talk about the things I've done and I'm not ashamed to go by the name Wonder Hussy. I think the word Hussy keeps a lot of people from watching my videos or from subscribing to my channel. And I've had people tell me that before, you know, like, oh, my wife, my, I tried to get my wife to watch your videos and she wouldn't have anything to do with it. And the irony is, you know, you watch some of these other 
female travel YouTubers, and I won't say any names, but, you know, they all have these nice, wholesome channel names, but then you watch their content, and they're, you know, charging you to watch them take a shower, and cleavage in every shot, and tight yoga pants. If you watch my videos, I'm not using my sexuality to get ahead. I'm, most of the time, I'm not even wearing makeup. I'm just trying to show you interesting stuff. So if I changed my name of my channel to something like Wonder Girl, or The Adventures of Sarah Jane, or something that everyone can enjoy, I'd probably have a lot more subscribers and probably get a lot more views. But I refuse to do that, probably because I'm truculent, I'm just stubborn, I don't want to kowtow to the bourgeois moral code of the day. And so by keeping that name now, it's kind of like a filter, okay? It's like a litmus test. If you're cool enough to watch my videos, despite the fact that my name is Wonder Hussy, then you're pretty cool, you're not judgmental, and you're all right in my book. So anyway, that's how I got to where I am today, my middling level of success, and I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. I don't plan to stop anytime soon. People ask me all the time, uh, you know, aren't you gonna run out of ideas? <laughs> never, there's so much stuff out there. I'll never run out of ideas. I haven't really suffered burnout. That hasn't been a problem for me because I like to keep very busy and keep working. I plan to continue on uh, posting two videos a week and maybe more for the foreseeable future. So stay tuned. Okay, now let's change gears and talk about how I make my YouTube videos. Now, those of you who are watching who are exceptionally sharp might wonder, well, gee, Wonder Hussy, how are you showing us your recording rig while you're recording a video? Well, that's because I'm recording the video with my current phone. This is my old phone. Uh, I kept an old phone just in case something happens to my new phone, but this is what I'm shooting on. Same thing, this is a microphone connected to a smartphone just on a little selfie stick that doubles as a tripod. And you might wonder, why do you use a cell phone? Well, when I started, I was using a GoPro. Well, I, I think I was hiking to Panamint City once and I lost my GoPro battery. So I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do? I can't use my GoPro. Well, I guess I'll have to use my cell phone. And so I shot a video. I don't know if it was that Panamint City one, but I shot a video with my cell phone. And it wasn't even this phone, this was back. It like had a, Samsung Galaxy S3 or something, but I shot a video with it and I realized it was actually way better. I vastly prefer the footage uh, on a cell phone to that of a GoPro. The colors were more vibrant. The stability was way better. Like there, these cell phone video, I mean, every cell phone nowadays could shoot awesome video. It all has built-in stabilization software. So yeah, you know, part of it is you can't, when you're shooting like panning, you can't be like moving all around. Like, it's going to be jerky but the software does do quite a bit to even it out. So, you know, part of that is technique. Like if I'm shooting a landscape or something like, hey, here we are in the middle of nowhere, you can try to do a steady pan and you can be, you know, trying is better than not trying at all. But the software in the uh, phone camera is really what does it. So after I shot that first cell phone video, I never went back to my GoPro. I mean, I still have a couple GoPros now and I use them for recording dash cam footage, time lapses, stuff like that. To be honest, I'm just really not a fan of the GoPro. I'm a fan of, I mean, I, I am partial to Samsung cell phones, but any cell phone has an amazing camera nowadays. iPhone, Google Pixel Pro, that's a really good one, um, or any of the Samsung ones. They're all, in my opinion, better than a GoPro. But then there did come a point where uh, I was going to Africa and I thought, oh golly, I'm going to Africa. Uh, I'm gonna need to get a real camera. You know, this was 2019 and I'd been YouTubing for a couple few years by that point. You know, now I'm starting to make my living at it. I had quit modeling. So I thought, okay, Wonder Hussy, it's time to get serious and buy a big girl camera. So I did, I bought this really nice Panasonic Lumix GX8 and Oh gosh, it's fancy. It's got a viewfinder that flips out. So, you know, you can film yourself, see what you're filming, blah, blah, blah. Well, you tell me, which one would you rather carry around with you when you're hiking? This thing weighs like four times as much as this. This thing is also more expensive than this. Well, maybe not the way phones are nowadays, but I don't know, your, your phone has everything anyways. You always have your phone with you. Why would you want to carry something so bulky and heavy around? Uh, but the kicker for me was, I shot one video with this camera when I was in Namibia. I was at this, uh, it's called quiver trees. They're kind of like Joshua trees, but they call them quiver trees. I was at this quiver tree forest. And so I go, okay, I'm gonna use my brand new fancy big girl camera and shoot this video of me at the quiver tree forest. Well, <laughs> what I didn't realize was, you know, these nice high-end DSLR cameras are HD. You know, they pick up every single pore 
on and wrinkle. Now, meanwhile, with these cell phone cameras, I mean, you can cheat and dial the filter, you know, that selfie filter that you can smooth your complexion out. Well, I don't, I keep it dialed way down to the end, but I, I do have it, I'm not gonna lie, bumped up, I think a little bit. I mean, well, right now I have this softbox light, so you probably can't see every single pore on my face, but golly, the video that I shot was this thing, you could see every dent and ding in my face, and I thought, mm -mm, no way, I am not using that camera. So unfortunately, the poor Lumix uh, mostly just sits in a box. I break it out occasionally for time lapses or it has a good zoom on it. So if I need to zoom in on something, I'll use it every now and then. But for the most part, it's just me and my trusty cell phone. Now, when I first started shooting with my cell phone, I didn't have any of this. I think I was just using the phone itself, you know, like this. Do, do, do. Well, I didn't even use a selfie stick or a bracket, or I certainly didn't use a microphone like this, but I found out pretty fast that I needed to come up with some answer to wind noise, okay? I shoot almost all my content outdoors in the desert where it gets real windy. And if you've ever watched somebody else's video that didn't have the appropriate microphone, you can hear that wind sound. It's supremely annoying. And you know, here I'm still watching my videos about how to make better YouTube videos all along. And you know, one tip was you gotta have good audio. You know, people will watch your video if it's jerky footage, they'll watch your video if it's blurry here and there, they'll watch it if it's this, they'll watch it if it's that. But if the audio is bad, they won't watch because it's really annoying. So that has been my biggest struggle with making videos was trying to get clean audio. And so this microphone that I use now, it took a lot of trial and error to come upon this uh, configuration. First, like I said, I was using a GoPro and the GoPro microphone is, is just part of the Thing itself. I don't, I'm not even sure where it is. So they make this foam covering that goes all the way, like a little foam sock that fits over the GoPro. And that's supposed to act as a wind sock. They call it a wind sock. Basically it just muffles the sound of wind and makes for better audio. I was not impressed with the uh, wind dampening effects of that GoPro wind sock. It, it didn't really do much. It, if it was windy, it still sounded real crappy. So then I tried experimenting with a lavalier mic, which is a little microphone that you clip on your Thing. It's like a little fuzzy thing. You can see in some of my early videos, I am wearing this little fuzzy thing and it was okay, but it really didn't work either because it was only about the size of a, like a grape maybe like this, but just the size of a grape. And I realized it just, none of this was big enough. You need a, a giant obnoxious, the biggest fluffiest windscreen you can find to deal with these desert winds. And so what I use now is made by the company Rode. R-O-D-E, and this one is called a Rode Video Micro, and it's freaking awesome. It costs $60, and it's worth every penny. Extremely durable. These things last quite a while. You have to buy a, a some kind of a tripod with a phone clamp on it. You can see I have this. I guess I should break this down part by part. Okay, so I have a tripod, which is a selfie stick that turns into a tripod, and it has a spring-loaded clamp that'll hold your phone. And it also has a cold shoe at the top. That's what that's called, a shoe. Anyway, it needs to have a shoe at the top that you can slip this thing that comes with the microphone right in there. And then you just screw it on. And now you've got your microphone. And then, well, this was another challenge I faced. This microphone comes with a connector that's supposed to plug into a headphone jack. Well, unfortunately, phones don't have headphone jacks anymore. That was like a huge inconvenience for me trying I had to buy adapters and some adapters worked and some didn't and I had so many audio troubles over the years audio is by far my least favorite part of any of this I like shooting I like editing I like email and corresponding I like all of it if I could have somebody help me out with anything it would be audio because I just don't enjoy audio but thankfully now I found there's this one connector that goes directly from the Rode Video Micro right into the USB-C port. And it is a dream. It makes shooting so much easier. And like I said, this Rode windscreen is epic. The only downside to this Rode Video Micro is when you're carrying this around, it kind of draws attention. You know, like if you're just carrying a cell phone around, like sometimes I want to record stuff on the sly. Like if I go into a business or something and I don't know, want people to know I'm recording, well, if you just hold your phone, you can kind of Ah, cruise around shoot footage but when you have this thing with this giant gray fluffy ball on top of it it does draw attention and now everyone's looking at you hey what are you doing but that's a pretty minimal downside compared to all the benefits that this thing provides and i'll put links to all these products 
in the description to this video uh, because I do actually get a decent number of emails from people asking me what kind of equipment I use. And so I thought I might as well just share all that info with you. Okay, let's go outside real quick. Uh, I'll show you how I shoot and how I edit, I guess by making a real quick demo video. Okay, let's go outside in the front yard of the old compound. Yeah, of course the wind died down now and it's totally still. It was like blasting windy all day. Beautiful evening in the desert though. Look at this amazing sunset. Sky's pink, purple. Oh, actually I do feel some wind. Let me see if I can catch wind noise I was talking about. Okay, I'm recording using my microphone right now. And here's what happens if I unplug the microphone. Okay, I'm outside walking around my Death Valley compound, checking out the beautiful twilight, listening to the beautiful coyotes. I don't know, does the sound quality uh, sound not as good to you? Okay, anyway, to demonstrate my shooting technique, I'm just going to go over here to this old miner's shack right across the street from where I live. I live out in the middle of nowhere where there's stuff like this scattered about. Anyway, you know, say we were walking through the desert and we came across this old miner's shack. Oh, what do you suppose was in here? Now, I should note, this particular miner's shack is on private property. This is my neighbor's property. She bought this shack somewhere and had it trucked in here so you know if I was making a video I wouldn't be able to just go in there and start poking around because well this is actually something I need to address earlier in my channel I didn't used to worry so much about no trespassing signs I kind of thought they were there more as an advisory you know like to protect the property owner from liability like well they don't really care if you go in there and shoot <laughs> I got busted once by Lake Mead law enforcement that's right, uh, some cop from out at Lake Mead called me once because I made some videos at these abandoned marinas. You know how Lake Mead is drying up? So I went to some of these abandoned marinas and shot videos of like the old abandoned motel that used to be there, park employee housing, brand new park employee housing, like duplexes that were like move-in ready, beautiful carpets, fresh painted walls, like the doors were just swinging wide open. It was bizarre, but these marinas were dried up, so nobody used them. So I'm out there, you know, making my videos, I posted them got a call from Lake Mead law enforcement. And I don't remember how he phrased it, but he basically asked me to take those videos down. And well, of course I complied right away because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get fined. After that, I was a lot more careful and more uh, observant of no trespassing signs. So if I was walking around the desert and came upon a building like this that had a no trespassing sign and a new shiny one like this, I certainly wouldn't go uh, in it. I might, you know, sort of like, explore the perimeter. So I guess that's what I'll do for this little demo video. So when I'm shooting a video, I'll come up to the building and I'll go, oh gee, look at this. Isn't this amazing? And oh, okay, let's check out the outside first. Go all the way around the outside, you know, pan up and down, point out any interesting, well, this one you can't see in the window, so it's kind of boring. But you know, if there were interesting things, I'd be pointing those out and I'd be looking in the windows and well, I'd also be turning the camera every now and then so that it shows my face. And well, depending on how you feel about my face, that might be a good thing or a bad thing. But I think a video is more interesting if the person shooting it turns the camera around every now and then so you can see their face and their reaction. You watch some of these explore channels and all it is is point of view. Like you're, and that's kind of cool too. I guess you can pretend it's you, you know, walking through the desert, looking at stuff, you know, oh, here's this building. Oh, I wonder what this could be. Blah, 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 blah. I just feel like it's a better flow if you flip back and forth and show your face. Okay, well, let's go around the last side of the building. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Doesn't look like we did. Matter of fact, I think that place over there looks a lot more interesting. <laughs> and it looks a lot warmer because that's my house. And I'm gonna go back into my nice cozy office now, because it's freezing out here, and show you how I would edit the video I just shot. Oh wait, better take a thumbnail photo before I leave. <laughs> Gotta have a nice picture to put on the thumbnail that's a will supposedly make people more likely to click on the video and again there's a whole science to that and i actually watched a bunch of videos there's whole channels devoted to how to make the perfect thumbnail supposedly people are more likely to click on a thumbnail that has a person's face in it where you can see the whites of their eyes and supposedly the color yellow is uh something that really attracts people so you're supposed to try to use yellow colored 
words and show your whites of your eyes and oh my god then you see these youtubers that make these corny expressions like oh my god you'll never believe what was in this crazy shack well unfortunately i'm not a very good youtuber so i don't generally make those crazy faces in my thumbnails okay so after i'm done shooting the footage for a video i get my cell phone and plug it in to my laptop and then this dialogue box comes up and I have to find what I just shot, which was demo, and then I drag that over and put it on my desktop, which I already did here. So I open that and I select all the files I just shot. And now I drag all that over into my editing software, which I guess I should say a word about the editing software I use. Uh, I don't use anything fancy. When I first started YouTubing, I had a PC. At that time, the Windows came with like a free video editing software called Windows Movie Maker. I think now it's called Windows Video Editor or something like that. Well, Mac has basically the same thing. On a Mac, it's called iMovie. Very basic software, but I find that it's plenty powerful enough for what I need to do. Oh, see here, I'm in the middle of editing a video about this ghost town I went to uh, with my friend Larry. So let me back out of this. I'll just call this the valley that time forgot because that's what Larry called that ghost town. Anyway, so no, I'm going to create a new movie. <laughs> this is so easy. I swear even a caveman could do it. So now I just have to drag and drop the footage I shot in this timeline. So I go back over to my desktop. There's all the stuff I just shot. Drag it over. Plop them down there. Now I've got... <laughs> The footage that I need to edit showing me walking out the door, going down the hill, listening to the coyotes, blah, 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 la, la, la. Now I'm going down to the building. I'm looking around the building. Lee, 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 lee. And then I shot my two thumbnails at the end. <laughs> one my way and one the YouTube way. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to editing with iMovie. I mean, they have these transitions you can pull like cross dissolve. You put that in between and now all of a sudden one clip dissolves into the next like magic how about that and then of course you can add your titles and little effects sound effects and music and i'll get into that in a minute but golly you know there was a time in 2021 that i thought okay you know now i've been youtubing for four or five years i need to start using real editing software i need to start paying because this is free i need to start paying to use Premiere Pro, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro. And so I did, you know, I subscribed to Adobe Creative Cloud for a full year. And, you know, I I made about five, six, seven videos using it. And so I became proficient at it, but it wasn't as intuitive for me. For me personally, iMovie is more than ample for what I do. And I think you can do some pretty amazing things with iMovie. What's that saying? It's not the tools, it's the trade person, trades person. I think there's a lot to that saying because, you know, I, I've been there and I'm sure you have to, you can watch the most slickly produced video, drone footage, everything's beautiful, you know, it's all color corrected. But if it's boring, it's boring. And no amount of color correction can fix boring. And you know, a big part of why I like using iMovie is that I'm cheap or frugal. You know, why pay Adobe $600 a year when I can use perfectly good free software that's already on my laptop? Uh, and to that end, I also don't like paying for music. Now, if you watch my channel, you know, I like to put a lot of music in my videos, background music, music here and there. I feel like it adds a lot to the video. And there's all kinds of uh, websites where you can pay to download or pay for access to libraries full of royalty free music because you can't just use any music you want in a YouTube video that you are monetizing, making money off of, because now it's a commercial video and well, you'd have to pay licensing fees. And you know, say I wanted to put like uh, you need coolin', baby, I'm not foolin'. Say I wanted to put a whole lot of love in one of my videos. And I could not do that because Led Zeppelin's attorneys would be suing me in a hot minute. So if I want to put music in my videos, I gotta find royalty free music. That's music that's so old that the copyright on it has expired or the person who created the music purposely gave it to be used for free. And YouTube actually has a huge library of music. I'll show you right here. They've got tons of music you can use for free. I'll show you right over here. We have, here it is, audio library. Okay, so you can see there are tons of, I don't know why all this Christmas stuff is coming up, but there's tons of music like 
If you wanted to use jingle bells in a video, well, now you've got jingle bells that you can use in a video royalty-free, no one's gonna sue you. Now, I find that there are certain songs I end up going back to over and over again, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, well, you might know what I'm talking about. There's certain songs I use for certain types of scenes, and, uh, well, let's just see. Oh, here's one I use a lot. You'll recognize this, uh, when you hear it. Here come the raindrops. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? I use that one a lot. Or how about this? Comfortable mystery. I use this one a lot if I'm exploring like some creepy old abandoned place. <laughs> sound familiar? Or if I have like a cowboy scene, I'll use this one here. How about that? Anyway, you can see there's just hundreds and hundreds. I mean, there's thousands of songs you can use on YouTube and you can filter them by genre. Say I want something that's uh, classical or I want something that's more jazzy or I want R&B. You can filter it that way. You can filter it by mood. I'm not really sure what, what song I want to use, but I need something that's kind of dramatic. So dark, dramatic maybe sad, you apply that, and then if that's not enough, you can even put in like keywords like, oh, I want something that reminds me of a murderer. <laughs> Look at that. So it did, it came up with one song. If I wanted a jazz song that was dark, dramatic, and seemed like it had something to do with a murder, it would be this. Huh? Sounds murdery to me. Anyway, you can download all those tracks for free as part of the YouTube creator program and use those in your videos as much as you want. So I really don't see the need for paying for any special music website. I mean, I guess maybe people, you tell me, maybe you are tired of hearing the same songs over and over again in the background of my videos, but I, I don't know. I feel like no one really listens to the background music anyway. And sometimes I actually wonder why I even bother putting in background music because it's very time consuming. Like the editing process to edit a video like this one I'm working on uh, that I showed you earlier, this ghost town that I was exploring with Larry. I think I shot something like, I probably had like an hour's worth of footage. So I had to get it down to, well, I got this one down to 21 minutes and 38 seconds. And now, you know, that just putting the footage together and chopping it up, that doesn't take much time, maybe a couple hours. But now I got to go in and put all this background music and that's what gets really time consuming. I mean, it could take, and it often does take an entire day, eight hour day, 10 hour day, just to fully edit a video. And that's on top of all the other, you know, shooting the videos and, you know, answering my email and putting stuff on my Facebook and Instagram and just all the other stuff that goes with keeping a YouTube channel going. I would say I probably work like 80 hours a week, two days a week shooting the content. I have to go out and find something to shoot and travel to the place and shoot it. So that's two days a week. And then it's at least two full days editing. So now we're at four days a week, but I spend a lot of time emailing. You know, I get a ton of email messages on Facebook, messages on Instagram. It's a lot. I answer as much as I can. If you have emailed me or messaged me and I didn't answer you, I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can. But I'm a one woman operation, man. All that editing is time consuming, but looking at the footage that I have here, this reminded me of one piece of music uh, that's probably the most important of all, and that is my intro. Now that song, obviously because of the lyrics, <laughs> that is not from the free YouTube library. That was actually written by a super cool friend of mine named Michael St. Leon. It's a full length song. It's actually a three minute song. And I, I kind of, part of me wants to make a whole music video for it, the whole thing, but golly, I already work 80 hours a week. When am I gonna have time for that? Actually, speaking of my intro music, I feel like I need to make my intro shorter because it's another tip they give you on all these, you know, how to YouTube channels. Nobody wants to sit through a 20 second intro. They want you to get to the point right away. And so my intro is, well, it's not 20, but it's like 12 seconds long. And in today's day and age with today's attention spans, people aren't going to sit around for 12 seconds. So what I need is some kind of really cool little animation that just wonder how like three seconds long at the beginning of every video. That's what I need. Again, I don't know when I'll ever have time to work on that, but uh, that is something on my to-do list. I mean, because I am, you know, I'm still trying to grow my channel. I, I'm still coming up with ways to grow my brand and, you know, Maybe I'll never get to a million subscribers, but I'd like to, you know, maybe at least get to half a million. And so to that end, 
I have some ideas of things I can do. I mean, first of all, I can keep plugging away, keep cranking out content. I could change my name, you know, like I said earlier, to something more family friendly. I need to get a better logo. Like I need to pick one. You know, I have a lot of merchandise for sale uh, in my store, if you check out my spread shop store. And I've got some cool logos, but I need one really iconic logo, you know, something super cool that people will identify with me. And I feel like if I plaster that all over, you know, my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube channel, like it's identifiable with me. I wear it on my hat. Like that might help. My website, I have a website. Like I mentioned earlier, I used to blog wonderhussy.com. Unfortunately, I used to blog about being a nude model. So if you go to my blog, there's a lot of nude photos of me on there. And consequently, it's flagged as an adult website. In fact, if you try to go to wonderhussy.com, it might go caution, unsecure, blah, blah. Well, it's not insecure. I'm not going to, you're not going to get a virus or anything like that. It, there's just some naked pictures of my big fat ass on there. And well, if you want to see that, go ahead and check it out. Or if you actually want to read some, I mean, if I do say so myself, I'm a very good writer. So if you want to read some literary, and I do mean literary, blog posts about what it's like to be a nude and fetish model in Las Vegas in the 20 teens, check it out. But for YouTube purposes, it'd be nice if I could redirect people from my channel to my blog and the blog would you know, be like a guide to all my adventures. Like, oh, so you watched my last video. Well, here's the place I was and here's how to get there. And assuming it was a place that I could reveal the location of. That's another idea. TikTok. I should probably start a TikTok. I suppose I should have a name for my followers. That's another thing I notice a lot of YouTube channels do. Like, they'll, they'll like I could call you all, you know, at the beginning of every video. Hello, my Husketeers and welcome to another Wonder Hussy adventure. Or, you know, hello, Hus puppies. Whatever, I could come up with a name for you. I don't know. Should I? Is that cheesy? Uh, do you like husketeers? Hus puppies? Comment below. And then the only other thing I could think of is maybe try to make my videos shorter because apparently people have short attention spans. So if I can just get them videos under 10 minutes, then I'll finally be able to grab that brass ring and success will finally be mine. Because at the end of the day, even though I have 230 thousand subscribers and by the way <laughs> there's my 100,000 subscriber plaque which if I was a good youtuber again I'd probably have that hanging right behind me instead of <laughs> all this other crazy stuff anyway uh even though I have 230,000 subscribers I am not satisfied I feel like I can always be doing better and I, I can always be doing better I can always be improving my editing which golly if I watch some of my old videos I've improved a lot. I can always be improving my storytelling. I can improve. I can just keep constantly keep improving. So I don't know when it comes to like gimmicky stuff like, oh, make shorter videos or I'll go on TikTok. I'll change my name. Huh? No, I'm not. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing the way I'm the way I like to do it. And yes, of course, I'll make some concessions, you know, like maybe try to keep things a little shorter and tighter. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be too long winded. But I'm, I'm not going to pander. I'm not going to change myself too much just to get a few YouTube subscribers. But I am open to suggestions. So if you have any ideas for something I could do to grow my channel, let me know. Matter of fact, I know one thing I could do to grow my channel is live streaming. I need to do a live stream and I'm really afraid to do it because the last I tried to do a live stream like two years ago when I got the dang 100,000 subscriber plaque in the mail is going to do a live unboxing. But the YouTube recording software didn't work with my phone. And oh my God, it just turned out to be a huge disaster. And it was supremely embarrassing. And that was like over two years ago. And I haven't live streamed since. I need to try again. I just don't want to be one of them YouTubers that's constantly live streaming and begging for money because that I find to be the most annoying of all. In fact, one time somebody did call me an e-beggar way back when I first started my channel. And that really offended me because like I've said in this video, I don't remind you to smash that subscribe button. And I don't ask you to like and hit the bell. And I don't remind you that I have a Patreon. I'm not an e-beggar. You know, I'm in here 80 hours a week, just cranking out content because I know a lot of people can't get out there and they live vicariously through this. And even those of you who can get out there, well, for some reason you keep watching too. And I appreciate that. So anyway, uh, this video is way long enough. I hope you found that interesting and informative, that little peek at how I do my business. If you have any specific questions,
feel free to email me. I answer as much email as I can. Uh, mm, I'm an open book. Ask me anything.